Hi everybody, in this lesson we're going to be talking about attributive, the attributive use of adjectives. This isn't a new class of adjectives, we're just talking about the way that they can be used. And in English, we, there's a difference between saying, say, the, the red dog, we're talking about Clifford here, versus the dog is red. This is the red dog is an incomplete sentence, first of all. The dog is red. It has a full thought. We can put a period or a full stop at the end. The red dog, the red is functioning as an attributive adjective. It's giving us more information about the dog, but not that's not the purpose of the sentence. It's just giving us further detail, specificity. If there's also a blue dog, we'd know, well, this is the red dog that we're talking about. This is more indicative statement of fact, and this we'll call the predicative or the predicate use of the adjective and this is the attributive. So in English this is easy because we put the predicate after the verb, after the linking verb. The dog is the subject and then the predicate adjective here is red. In Greek, this gets a little bit trickier when a word like is, the linking verb, as we kind of saw in an earlier note, est, or estin, depending on its context, can be dropped. So in that case, especially when word order is flexible, how do you know that the red dog isn't the dog is red in Greek? Well, this is how. <laughs> this is why we have this lesson. We need to make clear when something is attributive in Greek and when it is predicate. So we're going to skip predicate for this short lesson. We're going to get to that in 7.3. But for 7.2, we're going to talk about the different ways that adjectives can be written attributively. Uh, so if we go back to our example from Matthew, we had um, carpus calus. So what was this? Well, let's give it ultimately an article. So accusative, masculine, plural is what we have. The fruits. And what kind of fruits were they? Well, they were good fruits. So this is useful, but this is not, well, this isn't exactly what Matthew wrote. This is not attributive. So let's write, using those words, an attributive phrase. So we'll keep it accusative, why not? There's nothing wrong with that. So we can write the good and then, so just like in English, article first, then adjective, the attributive adjective, and then ultimately the noun. Tus calus carpus. The good fruit. So this is one way of doing the attributive. Another way of doing the attributive is putting the noun first, carpus, and then following that up with the article. Again, this is referring back. And then the attributive adjective. So fruits, the ones which are good. This is, again, functioning almost like a relative clause. We'll get to relative clauses in Greek later. There are ways of technically doing them, but this is giving us more information about those fruits. The fruits, oh, which ones? Oh, the good ones. Okay. And then finally, number three, we can double up the definite article. Tus carpus, tus calus. So the, the, really the difference here is we're talking about some fruits here, and here we're talking about the fruits. No definite article preceding the noun, so that's not really a definite phrase, but then we do want to specify some fruits, namely the ones that are good, are maybe brightly colored or, or ripe looking, where these are saying the fruits, the ones that we're talking about, these definite fruits, and then telling us more about them. They are the good ones. So all of these are attributive, and they're roughly equal to what we were saying with the, the red dog. This really just means the good fruits. 
And again, this is all in the accusative. We could do it all in the nominative with hoy, uh, carpoi. Carpoi, kaloi, so that should, that should go grave, but, but we did it in the accusative and that's just fine. Well, we also have a fourth option, and that option is one that's just without articles generally. So we could have carpus, kalus, or maybe even kalus, carpus. You're going to find that most of the time we're going to get an article. But you know what? Something that's really useful as we look at these to see what's attributive when there is an article. In every example, the attributive adjective is preceded by a definite article. This is going to be not the case when we get to predicate adjectives. You're not going to find that article preceding the adjective in each case. So I've told you a lot here, but really the shortcut is look at this adjective. Is it preceded by a definite article? If so, we're in the attributive. The good fruit, the good fruit, but really it's fruit, some fruit that's good. Um, and then the fruit, the ones that are good, the good fruit. All of these attributive uses of the adjective. These are not complete sentences, these are simply phrases that are giving us a bit more info about this fruit. We're learning that it's all good. <laughs> all right, so in the next lesson, we're going to be learning about the predicate use, uh, and this is also going to get exciting. Actually, I see now that uh, there's more to this lesson. At seven minutes in, let's see if we can do it in the next 45 seconds. And I talked about this a little bit, and this was the sub substantive use of the adjective. So in those previous examples, we had, let's make it nominative now, we had the good fruit. Can't quite draw well, but that's fine. The good fruit, hoi, kaloi, karpoi, great. Well, what if we were to just drop the karpoi? The good, well, what does that mean? Well, it's attributive, right? Because we have the definite article preceding directly the adjective. But now we don't know what kind of good things we're talking about. This is a big question mark. Well, we know one thing about it, it's masculine plural. The assumption in this context, if you don't have a very clear noun that you're using, is that this is referring to people for the masculine and feminine, and then things generally <laughs> for the neuter. So if we want to say the wise men, they are hoi safoi. Again, maybe we're talking about wise fruit, but if there's nothing here, it's we're talking about wise men. If we want to make them wise women, it would be high sofai. If we want to talk about our friends, they're hoi filioi, the ones who are friendly to us. This is what we had in one of the earlier chapters vocabulary, but it wasn't explained as such. When we saw hoi polemioi as the enemy. Really, what polemios means, sorry, let me rewrite that. Is hostile. That's what the adjective itself means. So polemioi are, is simply a substantive use saying the hostile people again assuming masculine here um, but then we'll also see I've given all personal kind of human examples uh, one thing that you know think Greeks thought you should avoid ta kaka uh, not the Brazilian uh, football slash soccer player kaka but it means bad things the bad things you should strive toward 
ha-agatha, the good things. So we're not talking about people here, we're talking about objects. This could be a whole lot, uh, but kaka to be avoided, agatha to be per, uh, followed. This is a nice use of the substantive form of the adjective, and note that it is attributive because it's following on. We don't have, you know, we could, we could fill this up with dendra, the bad trees, or maybe the good fruit. Well, well that doesn't work because it's not neuter. Um, good gifts, maybe. Ta agatha dora. These things work, uh, but if, if we don't have those nouns, we just have to assume most vaguely that we're talking about good or bad things. Good. Well, we can wrap that up for now and get to predative adjectives and the predicate use of nouns in the next lesson. See you then.